I'm Tim Sapomasan. I'm a political theorist. I'm a professor of practice at the University of Sydney. was formerly the Race Discrimination Commissioner at the Australian Human Rights Commission. I'm a first generation Australian and have Lao and Chinese heritage. Do you think discrimination is alive and well in the Australian workplace? Discrimination exists and we shouldn't deny that it doesn't. Often we talk about Australia as a successful multicultural society, which we are, but that doesn't mean that discrimination doesn't exist. It exists certainly along the lines of race and religion. The statistics show that very clearly. So about one in five Australians have experienced racial discrimination of some kind during the past 12 months. And the workplace is one of the most common places where people experience this. Have you ever experienced it? I've been fortunate in not experiencing a great deal of discrimination in the workplace, but I have experienced uh, racism in other places, in public places, in neighbourhoods. Uh, I've been one of the fortunate ones in not encountering it directly in the workplace, but I have seen it happen. I know what it looks like and I know the impact that it has on people who are on the receiving end. When you were Race Discrimination Commissioner, you took part in a report on cultural diversity which didn't come up with uh, particularly uh, good findings in terms of how much diversity there is in the workplace. Do you think we've made progress since then? Progress has been slow. It's been slow for some time. We don't see the multicultural character of our society reflected in the senior leadership of our major institutions, whether that's in business, whether it's in politics, government, or in higher education. Uh, in the study that we did in 2018, uh, through the Human Rights Commission and in partnership with a number of other organisations, we found that of uh, 370 odd CEOs and equivalents that we looked at, you had only 11 who had a non-European cultural background. So just enough to scrape together a cricket team which doesn't reflect necessarily well on how we are progressing as a multicultural society. Why is it, do you think, that we have so few Asian Australians in leadership positions? The causes are multiple. Uh, we, we don't yet have the pipeline of, of people in positions of leadership ready to assume very senior positions in organisations. Uh, we also have issues around cultural bias and the default that we have when we think about leadership. So if you were to ask people how they would picture a leader in their minds in an Australian organisation, they may not necessarily be thinking of, 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 of a leadership pool that is as diverse as it should be. And this goes to the problem of unconscious bias and implicit discrimination that can exist in organisations. We hear a lot that you only have a certain amount of bandwidth to deal with diversity. The big assumption there, of course, is that diversity work has to be sequential, that you can only do one thing or two things at most at a time. Uh, the message that sends to your workforce, however, is quite dangerous. That's the missing piece, and I, I think leaders are only starting to understand that if they're not careful in how they think about diversity and inclusion, they can risk alienating parts of their workforce and losing uh, talent who might decide that their best prospects of success aren't in Melbourne or in Sydney but are in Mumbai or Shanghai.